Hi everyone, I wish you are in safe. In this content, you will be introduced with the Boost SIO socket programming. This will be the step-by-step -step tutorial about the socket programming. After this tutorial, after this content, we will create and we will talk about the HTTP programming, HTTP server applications, web applications, I mean, and also web socket applications. That is why I want to use uh, Boost libraries. We can find all the packages, all the uh, development um, protocols there. This is simple. We can install easily. Before start, uh, update and upgrade your system. I did this before. I don't want to waste my time here. So now we will install the lib boost dev. It will take some time. After this, we will install uh, one more packages. Apt install lib boost system dev. This will be actually is important. Also, there is another uh, library. There is another package, lib boost all dev. Actually, you can also install this. But there are a lot of packages that we don't uh, use right now. These are not uh, necessary. We use Genie as an editor. Genie server CPP. Just create a server CPP file, and we include a stream and include boost as IO HPP. This will be the library. Int main turn zero. Let's try to compile this first to check our uh, development uh, libraries is working or not. We can compile with l a boost system dev system and server cpp minus o server. Let's say server l boost system. Yeah, that that there should be an underscore. Not a single line. It will give an error about the uh, pthreads. Also, that should be uh, pthread should be called here. In default, this is exist in the Raspberry Pi. Pthread. Then it will be compiled. I think. Yeah, great. So we can continue. Now we will get the argument argument as an argument from uh, the binary. When you start the binary, we will get an argument. We will pass two variable to server, one IP address, the second will be the port number. Example usage, you know. And int argc. And char star arc yeah we has an array cool so we will get an address as a boost as IO IP make address you can use also this also you can use the normal ways to get an as an IP address that will convert directly the IP address as a usable one then we can get a port number as an integer this will be the second one second argument then we will create an IO service. IO service is a thing that uh, in actually as abstract everything from you. Simply abstract operating system interfaces actually. Then show you don't have to worry about which interfaces, which um, attempt driver you will use, which and um, Wi-Fi driver for example. This is portable. You can copy directly this code to your computer for example. It doesn't matter. That is why it's called an IO service input output service then we will call an error code actually to get rid of this boost as IO um, long namespaces we can use using namespace boost as IO, as you know but I will not use it right now here to understand more better about the namespaces then we will create an acceptor with an endpoint also the IO service Now we create a socket here. We 
with IO service also. Now we are ready to accept the message as a string, right? Here it will wait after and until actually get a string, get a message from the client at that line, exactly, in 24. And we create a buffer. We read a message from the client as a server. Then we get sent back. I mean echo, simply echo server. This is actually read until socket buff until the new line character. And we pass an error actually, nothing more. If there is an error, we'll print the error message, error code message. And return minus one. Then we will get a data as a string from the buffer with casting, buffer cast as a constant char. It is constant char, as you know. Buff data, we can do that like this. Then we print the data. Then after, we write back to the client from the socket. Boost as IO buffer data. This is simple example. Uh, this is not an asynchron. This is waiting for the data, right? So in the next in the next tutorial, in the next uh, example, we will write an asynchron application, asynchron example for this. So just understand the basic idea. Let's let's compile. And there are a few error socket should be keys exist. Yeah. Then yes, cool. Let's run the server. Local IP address and 1234 is a port number. It's running right now. And we can see that with netstat, the port number is open as you see here. Port number is listening. Then we can use an NC tool to send a hello. As you see, I just sent a hello and server gets and I run again. As you see that, every time I have to restart the server, this is not an asynchron, right? There should be a loop in the code. This is not a good idea. This is not a best practice. We will talk about it later. We can also see the uh, web browser message, connect to server from a web browser, then you will see that the HTTP messages. You can also use this tool, this simple um, example as a hacking something to see the browser's messages because browser uses sockets, right? So that just create a client CPP, then we will create an, the next example will be the client CPP, client example for this. We will not use NC tool then. Boost as IO and create return zero. We will get an three argument right now, IP address, port number, and the message. The only thing, the only difference between the a server and a client is the message right client sent the message address port and a string message i will add here a new line character at the end then we'll create an io service like the server and create a socket passing io service then error code and connect boost as IO IP TCP endpoint will be the address and a port then we get the uh, an errors if you see some error then you can check simply with an if condition then we write to socket our message the buffer message right an error we will check copy the same if case here let me check i think everything is all right 
Yeah. Then boost as IO. Stream buff. Received. Receive buffer. We will print what server sends us to client. I mean, transfer all. We'll read. And if there is no problem, boost as a error, end of the file, then we will simply print the data server sent to us. If there is an error, of course, we will receive fail, just print to the standard output. Then else, we'll print data as a const char. Of course, we should take the first with the buffer cast. Receive buffer data. Then we'll print it simply. Yeah, cool. Then IO service socket endpoint, right? Message here, receive buffer, read, then we will print. Cool, then let's compile it. Client CPP as a client. Yes, there are a lot of errors. Should be message. It should be in the main like this, like the server. This should be make address that should be 2D. And let's check again. It should be right, not white. <laughs> Sorry about it. And an error EC should be yeah. Compile again. One more uh, problem. Stream buff that should not be as underscore. Stream buff. Now it's compiled. Then run the server. If you run the client, for example, you will see error because server is not active right let's run the server first then when client sends data see but I think the port number is sending then that this should be three <laughs> Let's compile again. We will not send the hello message, we just sent the port number. See, we sent the hello and server sends the hello back to the client and we print to, to the standard output. This is cool. We are in the, on the, actually we are in the same hardware, right? We can also send uh, to the server from another computer. For example, I can ping the Raspberry Pi from my computer, then I can send a data as a client as a hello message from another computer right as long as you can ping you can send the message see it's cool so guys uh, that is all for this tutorial in the next one the part two in the part two this is the part one in the next one uh, we will talk about the asynchron application asynchron example for this example for this server and a client application this will be the best practices this is just an example to understand the idea, right? So see you there.